are we expecting people to be on board? Okay, live stream. Yeah, we are. It. We're live now. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Iman Khalid, and I'm a community Communications Officer Intern at Fatma Al Fahri Open University. Our guest speaker for this week is Isra Al Balushi. Isra Al Balushi is a sought after speaker, a talent agent, future author, and change facilitator who wishes to transform lives, brands, teams, and organizations through consulting, training, and team coaching. She is the CEO of BME Agency, which is an inventive agency consultancy that future proofs an organizational culture and uplifts any thinking brand. Isra Al-Balushi encourages driven organizations, companies, and startups to build change within their surroundings and to become more human, adaptive, and innovative in the work that they do. BME Agency's team focuses on building cultural transformations and team coaching services to improve self-awareness, creativity, and resilience. We are very happy to have her as our guest speaker today, and she will provide a lecture on the topic, what does it mean to be a single mom in the creator's economy? Ms. Isra, you may speak. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Iman, and I'd like to send my regards and warm welcome to all the people streaming live now and watching it later, and for all the university members of uh, Al Fahri University in Estonia, I'm very honored to be elected to be a speaker with you today. And thanks to the internet, we get to Zoom with many people worldwide. And thank you for the shout out, I might say. <laughs> I'm still not used to hearing all of that about me yet, but I'm very grateful and grateful for you guys. So thank you for having me over. And um, I don't know where to start. <laughs> where to start? Um, you can just start with whatever that you've prepared, um, beginning the introduction of the topic that you're going to speak about. And then you can just go in the body and, you know, mm -hmm. just give a few tips to moms who are starting off in the creator's um, field. You can just give advice to single mothers who are going to start, who are going to work in the um, creator's economy and so on. Okay, so first of all, I chose this topic. Um, be, how, do, how is it becoming, oh, being a single mom in the creator's economy? Because actually having the title or being imposed or uh, with the title of being a single mom is not single at all, because when you have children, you're a full-on mom either with a partner or without a partner. So all the single moms out there, you are not a single mom, you're a full-time mother. And I salute every mother out there and mother-to-be because it is a struggling job, especially with our fast advanced and viral world. And being part of the creator's economy now, as they so call it in the 21st century, it's um, again, fast paced. We always have to be updated with what's happening, uh, what's new, what's not, what do we need to upgrade ourselves. It's not just our systems, it's within us. So to start off, uh, I, got, I get asked a lot of this question, how do I do what I do? Um, I think it started off with being, um, being, a, being a learner at heart, wanting to learn continuously, wanting to strive and understand myself at the beginning before understanding what do I want to provide for the world? So for all the, um, you know, let's say you start with after, you know, after high school, the automatic thing to do or the most sane thing to do is to go to university. And this is where mostly you get to find yourself. And I like to call university, um, let's say a stop point towards actually finding uh, your true path. And a lot of people, um, choose paths that later on, in their, in, later on in life tend to change their career. And some of them are lucky enough to actually enter a field where they're very passionate about it and push forward towards uh, the career that they want. So I do advise take as much extracurricular activities and classes, do know what you want to do. What do you want to impose? What do you want to give back to the world? Because it always starts with experiences, growth and ends with contribution. These are the three pillars of what we do at the agency and what do I like to teach as a consultant even. So uh, starting off with yourself is the most productive thing you can do out there. You educate yourself, you re-educate. Um, I like to, I've, I've read these words a couple of times and there's no saying, or they, they still don't know who said it. It's 
uh, learning to unlearn to and relearn. So it's all part of the process of being who you're truly meant to be, finding your mission and your vision in this life. And uh, you can start at any time. And university is a great place to start with. So um, aside from that, when you do have extra little munchkins <laughs> with you, uh, it gets very hard to calibrate the days and your time and their time. It's very stressful. I do, I do understand when mothers are stressed at work and sometimes even when you're you do have a partner at home, but it's always the mother's job is to nurture and to give and to provide. And in the 20, and, and in our century of days, also mothers want to not just provide by being just a stay at home moms. We want to provide even uh, in our work, we have talents and we want to expose our talents. Hence my uh, part of my uh, slogan also, or part of my, uh, um, let's say, taking things international or starting local, going global or going global and returning local. And uh, this is where I like to, um, well, to put it at that because um, I think every mom knows, or I don't want to even focus on just mothers, but every parent, let's say every single parent know that um, family do come first, but at the same time, providing for your family is essential. So you can uh, manage, you can balance because you can do many things at the same time if you time it right, if you plan it accordingly, if you have your schedule right and uh, you set your priorities, uh, say no more often, say no to certain friends that take up a lot of your energy, say no to certain people, even family members that do not provide in your space because you need to build yourself in this world. And um, we're lucky enough that we have internet worldwide. We can connect with people. Like I'm talking to you here, I'm from Kuwait and you're, uh, I'm sorry, Iman, I don't know where you are exactly, but you're somewhere I in the world. I'm also in Kuwait. <laughs> okay. The, <laughs> okay. But I'm sure other people from other countries of the world are seeing this. And um, um, so we thank the internet for providing us this kind of uh, communication and also education is, um, there is free education, there's paid education, and there is also you educating yourself. So it's a choice, where do you, where do you wanna take it? And uh, being part of the creator's economy, uh, navigating the creator economy is a gold rush. You have TikTok, you have, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have uh, YouTube, it's going viral and people don't know where to start. And um, this is where I'd like to touch up the topic about the uh, creator's economy. Uh, as the creator economy matures, it's hitting some bumps. So investors, marketeers, and influencers are sharing how they're navigating uh, the hype, uh, building direct to consumer businesses, and they're shifting relationship with brands. Um, the creator economy, the industry of influencers, bloggers, videographers, and anyone in social media monetizing their online fan bases is now 50 million strong. Imagine we're talking millions here. Uh, according to uh, 2020 reports uh, by venture capital firms, uh, social media platforms want them and brands and marketers want to work with them. So it's been the hype lately that everyone wants to be some kind of famous, but what kind of famous do you want? What do you, what do you have to provide? Are you into the arts? Are you into some kind of fashion? Are you business related? Are you into the education? It's all part of the viral, uh, the viral exposure of showing who you are and being truth and the realness of you is, um, let's say it's a big check mark and a tick point of what I would, uh, I would suggest to a lot of clients because I wouldn't uh, know how to support or push people that don't know what exactly do they want. So uh, we see also here as the industry is moving on from uh, days of paid ads and product placement, fueling the next stage of growth, our investors, a lot of investors are out there who say that uh, surging uh, viewership and um, an increase in supply of creators has led to a gold rush, which is, you know, all the money, the kitchen, as they say it, uh, in the creator economy, start up a lot of space. So, um, now we're not looking at earning thousands, we're looking at earning millions. <laughs> and the niche are the billionaire sectors. So that's also, it's, and it's not about how much do you wanna make, it's what do you wanna make? What do you need? What, you can make so much money, 
but also fi being financially educated, educating ourselves financially as to how to get money, invest in your money, and where to use your money, because you can take it, spend it, and you can just go back to the zero that you started. Even that is part of being uh, part of the creator's economy. It's uh, creating, stabilizing, and then promoting uh, technology. Technology's goal is to help uh, creators make money from their work turning them into small businesses, uh, beyond them acting uh, as a digital billboard. I still miss the billboards though, we still have them. I'm, I have a bit of old fashioned stuff, <laughs> like the PR, I would still go a bit of old fashioned. I do salute the technology that we have, but sometimes old is gold, we can't deny it. Or maybe we're just used to it, so it's a mindset. Um, you have also the creatorship has exploded. Everyone's creating something new. Everyone's uh, building, rebuilding, recycling, revamping, becoming the fastest growing uh, type of small uh, businesses. And we have them here in Kuwait. Um, uh, but there, uh, with that comes a lot of growing pains and it has begun to result in burnouts. People getting overwhelmed, overexcited. The hype doesn't, uh, as it, as I've written here down, the hype doesn't uh, match up with the current market size because the market is still somewhere and then everyone is booming up on another scale uh, while uh, plenty of capital is flowing in and startups are cropping up uh, to meet demand, which is yet another amazing thing. But then you don't have one set of category where you want to look at. It's like, um, I need to find a graphic designer or an illustrator. There's no, there's no 10 people. Now there are more, so it's a vast world. It's a pool, it's a pool where you don't need to go fishing anymore. You just need to know which pool do you wanna fish at or what kind of fish do you wanna catch? This is where the person in front of me or for viewers who are seeing, if you feel like you are in a space where you wanna study and you have something or a product or a service you wanna provide, you can do it. You're a mother or you're a father and either you're in a relationship or you're single and you still have a product or service, you can do that. It's all about maintaining, um, fixating and calibrating the time and putting your priorities in place. These are things we were never taught in school, which I think there should be specific subjects in school for, for that matter. I think the whole education system should be changed in school, honestly. <laughs> That's what I believe. I mean, I agree with you. Students should be taught how to freelance, especially um, since in college uh, they can use the extra payment for their own needs. Or, you know, some students, they aren't financially stable. So you they can use their talents to, um, you know, use that money for their own needs. Am I right? Definitely, definitely. And um, and also depends what kind of needs do you do you, do you have. Everyone has a different uh, stake out there. Everyone has a different um, life path. Everyone needs to, um, uh, we live in a very conscious uh, world now. I think like the past two years, the past three years, consciously people have up-leveled in different forms, up-leveled in their mind, up-leveled about their body, up-leveled about their thoughts. Up Some people went into the spiritual aspect, not just the religion side, about being humans, what are we here? What are we meant to do? Where are we supposed to take ourselves? I like to, I, I don't see it much as a paradigm. I like to see it as a triangle because it's a body, a body, mind and soul. And when you connect these things together, you get a very nice balance towards um, creating and giving back. You can give back by volunteering. You can give back by even, by even just um, helping out at home, you know? Um, uh, I, I do, I do, I, I felt a lot of people have been feeling they are, they're not enough. They're not giving back. This is where the burnouts of being part of the creator's economy, there is a boom. And then there is the, 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 the how can I say, it? there is the phase where you're supposed to also manage being within the boom because you're always moving. You always have to get the fuel running. If you're not balanced, this is where the drop happens and this is where the burnout happens. Um, people can give back to themselves by giving back at home because you get, when you give back to yourself first, that's the number one thing. You're taking care of you. We, you need to take care of you first. You need to see what is your needs. What do you want? And I am a big supporter of people studying 
and uh, educating themselves in things that they love, not what your parents want. And I'm so sorry, I know a lot of parents might disagree, but I'm a parent myself. If my daughter wants to be an artist and wants to go dance ballet and, and wherever she wants to, I will support her because that's her passion and she might exceed in this and she might open a school and educate people uh, about the form of dance or music or art or even writing or even even my son if he wants to pursue certain football he doesn't need to be an engineer i'm an engineer by first degree i studied chemical engineering i am not using it for the past 12 years <laughs> <laughs> to tell of you the course truth. i mean yeah, creativity is something that we're all born with and we can't just help and but you know that uh, that side of us to come out and it's something that you were born with so you know you couldn't help but use it and I think that's really amazing and more more people should do that. Yes. Um I think we've reached a nice um a nice a nice level. Maybe it's we cannot we cannot pinpoint exactly where is the end, but I know there is a beginning to it. It's starting to to fluctuate and fluctuate in a very organic in a very good way even even us in the middle east you see a lot of uh, people merging towards different talent even though we do have some blockages we do have some doors that are closing but if this door closes i am sure there are other doors opening and there is opportunities abroad i'm one i'm i'm the kind of person that has a, a mindset of actually expanding and moving abroad I would, I would definitely take my children and move out to a certain country, which I haven't decided yet, and, and build a life there. Why? Because I see it is possible. If I find peace wherever I'm at, I can move. That doesn't mean I'm disowning myself from that. And I'm, I'm not trying to be off topic of this, but this topic specifically, it's a wide range. It's like taking a bunch of seashells and throwing it on the floor and splashing all around because... It is part of being creative. What is creativity in general? It's craziness, it's weirdness, it's, it's, it's high, it's low, it's shyness, it's fun. It is what it is. We cannot pinpoint. Steve Jobs was considered a madman. Einstein was considered a madman. N and Nikola Tesla, like the, the, smartest, the smartest to ever live so far was considered, what is wrong with this man walking three times, six times, nine times before entering a building? But to each they had a calling and our calling always starts within so um again back uh, by the way i am known to have uh, as they said once uh, um what what was it what is it called um quentin tarantino style of talking it's like bam 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 but towards the end the end of the movie you understand <laughs> the, yes you understand <laughs> Um, but there's just yeah much. yeah you know yeah, um, and... I don't think that you could tell but I'm like the shy type of person I don't really talk much but I, I really like to listen to people talk so I'm really enjoying your talks right now thank you thank you so much Iman and uh, um well let me let me tell you what I do you said you're a shy person I don't, I don't really think you're as shy. Let's say you're a very good listener. We'll put it at that. Iman is a very good listener. So thank you for gracing us with your listening skills. Because again, part of this, a lot of people don't listen. A lot of people want to talk. They have, everyone has something to say, but what is the validity in what you're saying? And this goes back again to creating, to part, being part of the creator's economy. What are you creating? What are you saying? What are you giving out? Is it worth it? And are you, what, are, what is your pitch? Where is it reaching? Are you planning to reach millions? Are you planning to reach thousands? Are you planning to reach 10 people? Because if you change 10 people's lives, these 10 people are gonna go and change other 10 people's lives and that 10 will change other, and it depends. It's just, where do you scale yourself at? That's, that's where I like to look at because we all want to be famous and we want to be um, known and we want to make so much money but have we actually looked into how much work and effort and not just hard work, it's smart work put into it. The past year, Iman, I had, I shifted my mindset towards actors and musicians and I completely salute them for what they do because honestly, they do have, people think that they live in mansions and have all the private jets and cars and it's fun. But imagining living in that kind of status where you are known and every single detail of your life is just out there. 
there's barely any privacy, there's barely any normal human interaction, you can't even go out, that's hard and not anyone and reaching that point uh, in life and being, and of course they're creators, they're creators in acting and telling stories through screens or in singing, there's part also the creator's economy. That's not easy to reach that point. That's why when people are there, the most important questions you need to ask yourself, who do you need to become to reach a certain phase in your life? Like if you want to go international, who do you need to become? If you want to enter the university to study such and such subject, who do you need to become to, to finish that path in your life? And then upgrading. We download new versions of our, of our iPhones or Androids every time there's a new version. Why don't we do the same to ourselves? Some people are in lag. I don't deny it. I've said it. I've done a post on Instagram even about it. Humans are like iPhones and Androids. We're continuously downloading new versions of ourselves. And some are like really slow to load and some are just lagged and some just, they enjoy being in the older version. And it's okay as long as you feel okay. Like um, if we, if, if I go back also like creators uh, are businesses, this is also a business when you're creating whatever it is in the field that you're in and their businesses are creating real economic value and no matter what the value, because um, we wake up, we put lotion in our faces, we wash our faces, we brush our teeth, we dress into whatever we want to dress, we take care of our appearance and then we go eat. We're, we're actually living someone's dream. I've heard this, I'm a big fan of Bob Proctor, huge fan. I study in his consultation program. He says, when you, when you drive your car on the roads, do know that that was someone's dream. That was someone's dream to build a cement, like a cement based road where cars would go on a straight path or, or even have the curvy paths be nice. That's a dream. The table, the laptop, I'm using a MacBook Pro. That's, Steve, that's one of, you know, like Apple's dreams, one of the company's dreams. So we, we live in everyone's dream. Um, the university, I'm sure, the, it's, it's someone's dream to open an online university and provide the, an open space where people can study wherever they are in the world. And that's beautiful because that's what I loved about COVID. This, it opened this up that you can do whatever you want to do wherever you are in the world. And I salute you guys for that. And I think it's beautiful. Thank you for your kind words. And I think that COVID-19, it has been difficult for some people, but it has also been a great way for people to connect with each other and realize how strong our bonds were, you know, despite the pandemic, despite the distances, we realized how together we were despite being miles apart. And I think that's um, one of the most beautiful things about last year and how we realized that we really need each other to survive. Definitely, definitely, because um, if you look at every species around us, from the animal kingdom to the insect kingdom, they're all together in their tribe. They're all at peace where they are, except the humans. <laughs> We're still not. We're still a big question mark, but yet we are the most intelligent form of, we are the highest form of creation um, by the Almighty. We are, we're upgrading. We're literally, we're like a different form of system and continuously upgrading and uh, to which level? There is no stop, there is no end. If you see even society, if you, the past hundred years and um, I, I share this with my friends, I'm like, please, let's, let's take a moment and salute the toilets. People a hundred years ago <laughs> used to go out, you know, like in the wilderness. Let's, let's, let's compliment having clean toilets and a place to bathe and to clean ourselves and to just, you know, toilet. This is something yeah. people don't realize and acknowledge, but we need, to, we need to be grateful for the upgrade in humanity and where we reached. And the cars. creativity as well. Of course, of course. And there are creativity in toilets, but that's all on another topic. <laughs> I, can, yeah. I, can, I can talk about creativity in any field, but just get me started. Um, if we're going to jump past, uh, jump into the social media startups, um, uh, they help creators make content and develop their audience or grow their businesses beyond advertising. They're also gaining a lot of attention. You see a lot of companies um, aiming towards bringing transparency to their influencers. Uh, it's a field that is one of the fastest growing among a lot of small businesses. 
uh, you see here certain uh, companies allow creators uh, uh, to leave reviews of uh, brands they have worked with and share ad rates and information for negotiating sponsored uh, content, de uh, content deals. Um, a few of new uh, platforms, they tie creators value to cryptocurrencies. That's another thing that people should look into, including Rally and uh, the clout market, if you've heard of. Uh, people who are listening, they can check that out later and I can even provide the, uh, the platforms to that. They're giving fans and their audience the chance to invest uh, towards their own influencers, which is again, back to educating yourself to what you want. And uh, um, also, also for us as humans, we need to understand that um, being, being uh, creators, you are being a creator, you're providing a service. Maybe you might not be the face of your brand, but you are hiring people, you're working with people that help promote your brand, promote your service, uh, promote your product to, to see your mission and your vision come to place. So it's a whole, it's a whole, um, it's a whole tribe on its own. And, and these people that are, that are creators, like you can, you can follow. Uh, if I would ask you a question, if you don't mind, Iman, um, who's the content creator or someone on social media that you have to see their content daily basis? Would you share that with us? Um, I don't really have a specific person, but there is an Afghan-Canadian blogger. Um, her name is Mejgan Lashkari. I've also interviewed her last year, I guess, for the Women's Republic magazine, and I have been following her since 2017. Um, she's a poet, a writer, and also a scholar. She has published several studies regarding the... Um, issues that Afghan women face but you know right now she's on a break but I she's one of the bloggers that I have you know I have been inspired by and you know since I was like 17 she was someone that I really looked up to she was like my older sister even though like we never spoke but I always like checked her accounts I always saw what she was doing and I guess you know it's really nice seeing other women do amazing things in life and it really inspires you you know she was a point and her writings were something that I believe that young girls really need to see in this day and age because um, we really don't have certain women of color speaking about certain topics such as you know um, forced marriages or um, issues that they might face in workplace such as harassment or you know verbal abuse so um, she used to speak on those topics so that is one of the main reasons why I was inspired by her so yeah um, I would say Mage Gamari but other other than that, I read about um, one of the authors. Her name is Elif Shafak. I I guess you yes. know her. Yeah, of she's course. someone. I, yeah, I've read all her books. She's someone wow. that I really look up to as well. Really, very nice. So um, you see here, you see what I did here. Um, at the beginning, like let's say 15 minutes ago, you said you were a very shy person. I got you to talk about one person, and then you jumped into the second person who you're passionate about. I can see that maybe you have Afghani roots, if I'm not mistaken, Iman. No, I have Pakistani roots. Pakistani roots, then it's co close. I see that you're passionate about, uh, obviously, women empowerment. And when I speak about women empowerment, which I did a post last time, and for any of the guys here, so if anyone listens, even later on, uh, women empowerment is human empowerment. Once you educate a woman, you're educating a nation. Because no matter what, they either they like it or not, we have all been born from women. Not men, from women. It's a fact. <laughs> they should just accept it and move on. <laughs> and, and I see you like poetry. So um, thank you for sharing this with me. Uh, I think you're very passionate in what you do. Uh, you're, you're like the silent bomb. There's a lot that can come out, out of you. And I see, and I'm, I'm enjoying this, even though I'm speaking more than... Uh, Maybe we're not having much of a dialect, but what you just shared showed that there is potential for anyone. There's potential for you. You could you could be a writer. You could you can even if you want, you could be an anonymous writer. You could create whatever you want to create. So a new following these, let's say these two people, these writers, these poets, these activists, rest assured that they are following other people that they admire and the other people that they admire follow other people that they admire. So it's a cycle of creating and recreating and creating and recreating to build up what we call of um, 
of um, I'm not going to call it an industry or let's say an upgrade in our in, in us as humanity as a cross-cultural global um, global uh, civilization upgrading civilization in itself uh, we don't believe in the industry we don't live in the industrial era uh, although um, it was a big boom back then uh, I do not believe in the nine to five job or like the eight to three depending on which country you can be your own boss you can even work and have your side business um i, I don't know how much time we have left but i wouldn't want I, I i even like the talks to be a bit short and if anyone would be interested they can like contact me my instagram is open they can send me an email iman please feel free to share with anyone and I'd, I'd love to have certain discussions up until my website goes up and running, hopefully within a month. Um, there, is a, there is a possibility, there is potential. I'm the kind of person that I do push people for what they want. And even if what you want does not work for you now, it's okay, you tried it. Because this is, this is what I have. It's some kind of, I'm not gonna say it's a motto, but it's, it's embedded with me. I try every single thing that I wanna try. I like it. I put it in my categories box. Okay, it's part of my category now. I like this uh, playing this instrument. I enjoy listening to this kind of music. I enjoy this kind of sport or going to this kind of lecture or poet or an educator. If I don't like, I don't continue without judging because even these other people, they do have their other crowds. That's being part of the creator's economy. You do not need to like every single thing that's out there. You find what suits you. And what suits you will suit that person also because you are, we are exchanging energy. We are building, we are building the certain blocks of our life while like the same way you're building your blocks of your life. And just like a baby, you start off young and you grow. And this is, this is, um, this is experience. This is life experience. And again, I specifically chose the topic single mom because I'm rephrasing the word single mom. And I'm working actually on a program which uh, I'm, I'm, I'm immersed into it this week. And I, I'm writing because I do want the word single mom to be rephrased. I was asked a few days ago by a friend of mine, unfortunately, uh, he's from the Middle East and he's like, you know, I did not know that single mom meant that she doesn't, the, the father is not available. I thought single mom meant that she had kids without marriage. I was like, wow, we need to educate you on a whole different level now. So being a single mom or a single dad or a single parent is not single. You have, you have some other human on board that you need to raise and educate and take care of. And uh, the list goes on just like just like when someone tells you, and I'm not ashamed to say it, or I don't think it's a taboo to talk about it. Are you single? Are you, are you with someone? You do not, when you're with yourself, you are not single. You're whole on your own. You, you are not single. You're just whole on your own. If we could acknowledge this and respect ourselves enough and build boundaries to, uh, to love ourselves before loving anyone else, I think there's, there will be a whole lot of change. And I would give that to the mothers because no matter what, what it is, it starts with the mother. She, she, she fosters the child in her belly. Either you're a mother who, who had the child through birth or through adoption. A mother is a mother no matter what. So in nurturing and putting these aspects and thoughts in your sons, you put, uh, you put certain, cert it depends also the background, that's a whole other topic also. But you put the male, the main human needs, uh, respect, love, and care, and then other things you want you want them to build and let them find out. And uh, acknowledging the child, this is part of my conscious parenting because when people come to my workshops before, they thought in, that I would be teaching them about their kids. But conscious parenting is nothing about the kids. It's all about you dealing with your inner child and you as a parent. And um, yeah, I, th I think I said a lot today. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah, we enjoyed listening to you. Um, I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Yes, that's why I gave time for the questions. Please shoot. Yeah, sure. So my first question is that there are many women who leave behind their career aspirations or they take a break once they become mothers. And I completely respect that decision. But, you know, what advice would you like to give to the mothers looking to come back into the workforce after years of taking a break, either to raise their children or to become a housewife? 
Okay. Um, I was one of those parents. Um, I can't say it was a fully, it was my decision to be a stay at home mom up until my kids went to nursery, both of them. So I took five years out of the workforce. Uh, I do not regret it because it was a choice. And even if mothers were, let's say they couldn't, they didn't have a choice. And I wasn't the kind of parent that raised my kids through nannies. I raised them on my own till this day, no nannies. I don't believe in this. I believe that you raise your kids the way you are. And I don't judge parents who do have extra help on the side because to each they have their own life. And I always said this, Iman, like whatever I say, it's my truth. It's mine. It's what I experienced and went through. Maybe everyone's experience is different. So that's why I always say calibrate to what you need. So while you're at a home, uh, you're, you're taking care of the child, but that does not mean that you shut yourself out from the world. Again, we have the internet, we have laptops, iPads, we have phones. You can still stay updated with what you want. You can, you can a lot of, um, top-notch moms when they stayed at home turned out to uh, make a business out of something to do with you know like uh, toddlers or uh, children you know and they found that this is their passion being about it like for me I never liked children to be honest with you but the moment I was pregnant with my first child I just a lot of these emotions changed and I went into reading and started educating and that's when I took my third uh, degree in being a parent and health instructor. And I wanted to like give her the healthiest food and educate her. And I wanted her to be the next Einstein. And then when I it got introduced to conscious parenting and I was like, oh, why am I putting all my beliefs in this child? No, it is the same way as I'm my own soul. And I didn't want my parents to control me. I would do the same. And then I realized I, need, I would like to help women and also uh, m men out there understand this because no matter what, we, we do need each other. It's a balance, the male and female, it's a balance. We wouldn't be here without each other. And uh, just educate yourself and enjoy taking time off. Uh, how many times, Iman, you've worried about something that's gonna happen within a week and then that comes and finishes and then you go ending up worrying about something else, right or wrong? So why yeah, do we happens. worry? We're why, why are we worried? Why don't we just, we were never taught to actually enjoy life as enjoy it. And anything that comes to us that doesn't suit us, that doesn't fit us, you don't need to be sad about it. You, you just need to learn to take a break and understand, oh, why did this happen? Because we're going to understand why it happened later on. And it's always for our benefit. A funny thing is before I came to the office, my car stopped working. I was under a building. I, I had to go to, to one of my clients, drop something, and the battery wouldn't work. I swear to God, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be late for this university Zoom. What is happening? I, what is it? Mercury retrograde. They say it in the stars. But then, but then I just called my assistant director. I was like, Arumi, please come and help. Please come and pick me up. And she picked me up and I'm here. And the car is going to service. It got dealt with. Why did it happen? I don't know. I, it happened today better than it happens mid road and I get into a car accident and something things happen in life. It doesn't need to stop us. If we learn to smile about things and, and, you know, like pass them along and enjoy it would, it, it would move forward. I would suggest for everyone, not just mothers, uh, go follow people, go follow creators or content or stories or, speakers that put a smile on your face if you watch something that doesn't suit you and is making you feel bad don't watch it don't watch it even news you can watch the news but you don't need to suck it in especially before bed i would advise no one you can contribute you can contribute by making a difference with the new you start with you and then with your home and move forward that's nice. Thank you for the motivating advice. Um, as I've mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, you are also a future author. Um, is there something that you're working on that you would like to share with the audience? Or if you will write a book in the upcoming years, what topics would you like to explore in your writings? I've, um, I've actually written a couple of things, but I haven't had, let's say, the guts to publish them. Because I know when I do, if I do publish them, it's going to take me in a whole spiral and I'm going to be in the publishing world. It's not like I'm not ready for it, but I do see 
I do see me publishing uh, something by next year, definitely. And I took a decision this week, actually, because, you know, every business consultant has a business consultant and it just came. It had a eureka moment with the, our um, weekly meetings online. And she's in Australia. Again, I, I am very grateful for the Internet. <laughs> um, I would be I would be talking about uh, I would be talking about things that relate to me, which is um, which is which is obviously about uh, not just children, about parenting, about being also, again, uh, I, I'm, I'm working towards uh, having a program, rephrasing the word single mom, because again, it's not, it's not you being a single mom. I do, I have written um, short stories that I would, I'm ready to publish them. I finished them two years ago and uh, uh, I think that would be fun, but, it, but they're all based on real life stories. There's something very, very, dear to heart but i don't think i'll be publishing anytime soon because i didn't manage to finish the ending it's a relationship book but it's it's written in a very unorthodox way very funny it's chapter based and it's nothing to do with anything and i have i had two people who are writers read it and they're just waiting for it but i cannot publish it because there's no ending but it's it's very comic related and uh, this is maybe this would be a second thing that I would publish, but the first I am thinking towards publishing something to do with the, um, I do not want to use empowerment. I still think there are a lot of words that we need to add to the dictionary because there's not enough words that express the way we feel, uh, but something to boost people out of their normality because uh, we put limits to ourselves. We put blocks. There are no blocks. It's not there. It's not even visible. Uh, you can be whatever you want to be. You can be whoever you want to be, and you can do whatever you want to do, no matter your age, your gender, your nationality, it's possible. Uh, and if no one believes me, uh, you can look at a lot of worldwide people that have started from nothing and uh, just boosted and became something huge, which I am a huge supporter because these are the people that I follow and support. And uh, I can name a few even if you'd like to know. Yeah, sure. You can name them. Uh, I'm a big fan of Vishen Lakliani from Mind Valley. I even met him in 2019. He's the CEO of Mind Valley. Amazing, amazing guy. I I've met Steve Gardner, uh, Chris Gardner, sorry, the CEO of Happiness. You know the movie Will Smith that they've done in Pursuit of Happiness. Yes. Oh my God, yeah. energy was something else, and uh, we had a nice chat. He was amazing. I I've met. Akon, interesting story as to how he became a singer. Uh, I love, I'm a big fan of King, Bob Proctor. I, I call him King because he's, he's one of the oldest business development coaches around. I love Tony Robbins. I love Robin Shema. These are people where I, um, and there's, the list goes on. There's so many, obviously, Oprah. These are people where when you read their life stories, they give you, they give you power that you can just go do what you want to do, but you need to find what do you want to give? What is it? What is it that you have out there or inside of you that you want to give out to the world? What is it? Are you giving, are you providing a talk? Are you providing a service? Are you, maybe you're, you're an excellent, excellent uh, partner, which is hard to find. You're an excellent supporter of uh, whoever you're, a lot of people are excellent behind the screens. IT, I thank the IT, a lot of IT developers all around the world. Without them, we wouldn't be having this. I'm not interested. I have one of my clients, he's into IT. I, I love, I love the, you know, I love PR, I love marketing, consultation, business development. IT, never my field, never. <laughs> these, are, these are the kind of things, um, people that I like, and, and these are the kind of book ideas I would love to... <laughs> publish that's nice i've never talked about it, by the way you're the first person that asked me i think you just put me in a the spot there thank you iman it's okay because i believe that you have a lot to say and of course if you have a lot to say you have a lot to write so you know i believe that if you really publish your ideas it will reach the right people and it will help them in whatever um field that you write such as um you told me that you want to write about children right so I believe that your uh, your book will reach the perfect audience and it will really help them and also impact their lives in a positive way so thank you so much for sharing that with us and thank I believe you. that this 
the live event for this week. Um, thank you so much again for being here. We truly, truly appreciate your time. And before we finish off, are there any final comments that you'd like to add? Um, well, I'm not gonna say comments, but I would like to, there's always an ending. And we've heard a lot about the, we've heard a lot about the why. So you're living in Kuwait, so I know, I know you're very aware of this. Our very big vitamin W. We have, we have a thing in Kuwait, it's a vitamin W called wasta. Wasta means, you know, the extra push you get into government sectors or certain places to get you certain, certain things, let's say. It's um, something I'm not fond of. That's why I called it vitamin W. And we can twist that. And uh, a lot of people, if they can make use of their W and shift it toward asking themselves, you know, the three whys, the who, why, and where, the what, who, and why, and where, that would be amazing, like for everyone out there, starting off university, feeling lost, even, even, even midlife crisis happens, like in the middle of your life, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, you can, you, it's normal to have like a pause and be like, no, this is not serving me anymore. And go, okay, what's the next chapter in my life? It's okay to be okay where you're at that the people need to know there's no there's no running because uh, in this uh, in acting this way as because I'm very much humanitarian at heart and I do believe that people should live life the way they want to live it in any way they want without being questioned and without annoying anyone you don't you can live your life but not bother anyone with the life that you're living if it doesn't suit certain people so uh, we I would ask them you know what is it that you want to do and who is it for? Again, is it a service? Is it for the community? Is it a product? And uh, why is it different? Why is your thing different from the rest? And where does it fit in your community, in your society, in your country, in the world? These are things that would help. And um, I've, I've, I don't know where's my other phone, but I've recently, I like to write little quotes or affirmations. On a monthly basis, I change. It depends on what do I feel like. And I've written something and stuck it at the back of my phone, not this phone, but the other phone. And I've written like, what you have to offer is a gift to them. To who? I don't know. But every day I wake up and I, I see this on my phone and uh, I believe in what I'm doing. Even if a lot of people understand it or don't understand it, as long as I am fulfilling my need, as long as you fulfill your need your space because when you eat you you fill your tummy you don't fill anyone's tummy when i eat iman doesn't get full <laughs> this is not true yeah. i get full and yeah. when iman eats she's the one who's full so fill yourself up with what you want and make sure it's healthy and metaphorically speaking and just enjoy life really smile to life it's i i think life is a beautiful place with all the things that are around us there's there's a reason for everything, but living your truth is something that, again, back to the main topic, it's living your truth is something very hard to find in the creator's economy. Once you have that as a creator in providing your service and in providing your whatever you're providing, your brand or your product, and if there's truth behind it, there is realness, people will, will acknowledge that it will touch. I've seen this before. Thank you for the lovely words. And I believe this concludes our event for this week. Um, we wish you all the best in all of your future endeavors and good luck with whatever you aspire to pursue. Thank you so much, Iman. Thank you for everyone who's watching and who's going to watch. And uh, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Have a lovely welcome. day. Yeah, you too. Bye.